last March at my first board of revenue estimates meeting, realized that our economy just wasn't growing at the rate that really it felt like it should be. And so decided that to work with our Bureau of Revenue Estimates and our new policy division to put together a deep dive on our economy itself, both by crunching the numbers and looking at the data, but also by getting out around the state. And we talked to hundreds and hundreds of business leaders in every corner of the state about how things were going for them. So it's been a really exciting process. And my hope is that it spurs collaborative conversations about how we can build a stronger economy over the long term. We knew that it was important information to get to people before the legislative session. So we wanted to make sure that that happened. We have a strong economy. We have a low unemployment rate. We have high productivity one of the lowest poverty rates in the nation. We also are home to a really unique and diverse blend of industries, both our, the federal government um, and, the, and all the different agencies that we have in the state of Maryland, and a set of diverse and emerging industries. The sluggish growth that we've seen in Maryland is really concentrated in the private sector because our federal government sector has been growing during and since the pandemic. Um, and our private sector growth is really constrained by our labor shortage. We saw more women leaving the workforce and not returning in Maryland than our neighboring states and the nation at large. Um, nationally, about 1% of women left the workforce and didn't come back. And in Maryland, we're at 2%. Um, and that what that means is that of the 181,000 Marylanders who left the workforce, a larger percentage of them are, are women. And you know, I think there's a number of reasons. One is childcare costs, right? We've seen childcare costs increase. We've also seen the number of spots available for childcare go down. But I also think some women, um, they opted out and they chose other types of employment. You know, maybe they started their own businesses. We've seen a higher rate of entrepreneurship among women since the pandemic. And so now we have to make sure that we're supporting those women in the growth of the business that they started as well. You know, the federal government is a top employer in Maryland and really a key driver for our economy. We are home to more than 60 federal agencies and 14 military installations. Um, and the federal government, it, it added jobs in Maryland during the pandemic, which really provided incredible job security and provides wage stability um, in the, at the county level, at the state level. Um, and then, of course, the, the federal government supports an ecosystem of private sector suppliers, contractors, and subcontractors in Maryland as well. So federal procurement pro provided a $42 billion investment in Maryland businesses in 2022, which was about 10% of the state's GDP. So it's among the top 10 industries in Maryland, a share of total employment the federal government is. And so it's just a really important part of our economy that other states don't necessarily have. So our real GDP per capita has grown only about 2.1% since the end of 2016. Nationally, it's grown 11.9%. Virginia's grown 9.9%. Pennsylvania, 7.5%. I think, again, one of the challenges that we're seeing um, is the ability, because of the labor force participation constraints, um, that we're not seeing that private sector job growth. Slower growth is mentioned, uh, is really tied to um, uh, the higher cost of living in Maryland as well. So one of the things that we have seen um, in terms of labor force and in terms of growth of the state is that during the pandemic, Maryland lost population for the first time since World War II. And a big piece of that is housing. Our housing costs have really outpaced um, our people's ability to afford to live in the state. And so we have to be very intentional about how we can make it easier to build the type of ho build housing in, in the state, renovate and rehab old or unused houses, um, and to build for the future so that we can lower the cost of living in Maryland and create a stronger and more stable population base.